Haleluja. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Haleluja. I want to greet the Holy Spirit. This is his house after all. Hallelujah. So we want to greet him and, and thank him for welcoming us into his house. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit, for welcome, welcoming us into your dwelling place. Hallelujah. A place made with hands. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jehovah God Almighty. Hallelujah. That you gave us this opportunity to come into your presence. And we want to greet, hallelujah, our pastors. Pastors David and Georgia Lewis. We greet them. We give them a heartfelt, warm greeting in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. We greet the members of the ELT. Hallelujah. 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 We greet the workers and members of Kingdom Grace International Ministries. We greet our partners overseas and locally. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Special shout out, special greetings to Pastor Sam and everyone in Pakistan. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to another day of fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. We thank the Lord that this is a day that he has made. And we will, we shall rejoice in it and be glad. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before we start in the prayer, I'd like to just read from Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 19. Begins by saying, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you, we want to praise you, we want to acknowledge that there's only one God and that is Jehovah. Hallelujah. The Lord above all lords, the king above all kings. Hallelujah. 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 The great I am, the ancient of days, the rock of ages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our rock.
the sun, moon, and the dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall hutter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. Hallelujah. For he is strong that executed his word. Hallelujah. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Hallelujah. Therefore also now said the Lord, turn he to me, even all your heart, with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart, and not your garment, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to hunger, great in kindness, and repented of evil. Lord, we are building, we are building strong. Hallelujah. We are running with horsemen. We are champions. We are created in the image and the likeness of God our Father this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, oh God, we come to take dominion, we come to take authority, oh God, be he lifted this morning, holy gates, be he lifted up he everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in, we declare that you are the king of glory this morning, oh God, we come to do nothing, but to take souls and territories, to take back what the enemy has taken from us, give us souls, let we die, Lord God, give us the souls of men. Give us the hearts of men this morning. In the name of Jesus, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, said the Lord God Almighty. Oh God, we declare that we are an army. Oh God, we and we come in agreement. We come in unity this day. We come in unity this morning. So blow your trumpet in Zion this morning, God. Sound an alarm. We come to sound an alarm in Zion this morning. We come with fasting. We come with praying before you. We lay our hearts at the altar. We lay our hook on the rebe kundarabasataya. Oh God, be exalted above the other gods this morning. We lay our crowns and we worship you. We lay our crowns and we worship you. Oh God, you are the rock of ages. Oh God, you are the bomb in Gilead this morning. You are the one who reigns forever you are the one who's seated in heavenly places far above principalities and powers you are the one who's seated over new nursery over saint catherine oh god over laristan over shelter rock over spanish town over greendale over twickenham park oh god you are the one this morning who is blowing the trumpet because you are god from everlasting to everlasting oh god oh god God will call upon you today by the breath of your lips you have slayed the wicked oh God in the name of Jesus let the wickedness of the wicked return to the wicked this morning oh God in the name of Jesus we pull out the souls of men we pull them out Rakataya. we are fighting for what we are building and we are fighting for what we are build oh God we are taking back what the enemy has stolen what the canker worm and the palm of worm has eaten this morning hallelujah Lord, you said you are a jealous God. You are jealous of your people. Oh God, so we stand in half of you this morning. We stand in the gap for your people this morning because your word declares if my people, oh God, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, God, you will hear from heaven. You will heal our hand. You will deliver this land. Oh God, you will deliver this nation. Oh God, you will deliver us from stronghold. You will deliver the people from captivity in the name of Jesus let every chains and every shackles be broken from all their feet from all their hands in the name of Jesus let the burden oh God be lifted oh hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Your word declared that in that day, oh God, the yoke on the the burden shall lifted from off their shoulders and the yoke from about their neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Let the anointing break the yoke on the Let the anointing break the yoke this morning. Oh God, let the anointing break the yoke. Lord, we call for the angels of the Lord who is strong and mighty, the angels of power, the angels of might, the angels of virtue. Oh God, the ministering angels to minister to the hearts of men. We break oppression and depression that is upon our nation, that is upon our communities, that is upon our people, that is upon our men, our boys and our girls. We break the spirit of suicide. We break and destroy you now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we break, we break. Sata. Oh God, every spirit of reveling that want to come up in this nation. Oh God, at this time, we declare God that their resources will be dried up in the name of Jesus. We declare a divine intervention from the realms of the spirit. Let there be a shaking. We break every diabolical spirit. We break every buffermation spirit. Oh God, we come against the beast of this nation. Lord, let your glory be filled in this nation. Let your fear resonate in this nation and in the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let, oh God, your priests and your ministering people weep between the porches and the altars. Oh God, we come with a wailing. We come with a crying. We come to build a hole with its praises. We come to stand in the gap. Oh God, we will be the repairers of the breach. Lord, your people will never be ashamed. Like you said, Israel will never be ashamed. God of all ages. Hallelujah. God of the beginning. God of the end. Oh God, the first and the last. The I am that I am. The great high priest. Hallelujah. The one we bow to. The one we worship. The one we ekundorobo satai. The one we exalted. Hallelujah. Be exalted, oh God. Be exalted, oh God. Be exalted, oh God. Because you are far above principalities and powers. You are far above the rulers of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for your great army. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that we shall eat plenty. Your word have declared it. And we, God, we believe it by faith. You said you will do wonderously in the name of Jesus amongst your people. You said God we will never be ashamed in the name of Jesus. Oh God even when we pass through the waters oh when we go through the flood. Oh God in the name of Jesus we shall be a remnant in Zion. Oh awake Zion awake. Oh Oh God, pour out of your spirit. Rescue your people. Oh God, rescue the lost and the dying. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, let there be laborers. Let there be laborers. Let there be laborers, God. Oh God, the fields are ripe. Oh God, the fruits are ready. But there is no laborers to pick. Oh God, let there be a preparing. Oh God, of laborers. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let there be an harvest. Let there be an harvest of souls and territories. And then they kundere bo sakatai. Lord, we lengthen our stakes and we expand our boundaries. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let okondori ba sakatai. Let there be rivers in the desert and roads in the wilderness. Oh God, let your sons and your daughters come to your house. Oh God, pull them, Lord. It is not by force. It's my will because you said who you love it you chase it chase them by your spirit hallelujah chase your people God 
chase your people, God. Let there be a chasing. Let there be a chasing, God. Break the stronghold and loose them, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we put prayer, God. We pray fire to every prayer. Oh, God, let every heart as God that has been raised will continue to be lit. In the name of Jesus, we break every diabolical heart that come against, oh, God, your people and your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the altars of the Lord will be exalted. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, and every other altars will bow. Every demonic altars will bow. Let there be a servicing of the altars of God by prayer. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the fire upon our altars will never go out. We declare that the fire upon our altars will never go out. Oh, God, we will pray with power. We will pray with authority. We will take dominion in the name of Jesus. Because, God, the weapons of a warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we will not stand in the ways of sin. We will not sit in the seat of this carnful this morning. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, we call upon you, ancient of days. We call upon you, bombing Gilead. We call upon Kundoro Bosatai. We call upon you, mighty warrior. We call upon you, the one who was, who is, and is to come. We call upon you, ancient of days. We call upon you, the one who said, Oh, Robushi Kundoro Bosatai. Reko Tori Bakandai. Rebushi Kutoro Bosatai. The one who said, We will not want, yet do we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil. Hallelujah. The one who said that he will judge swiftly. Hallelujah. Lord, we sound an alarm in Zion. We sound an alarm in Zion. Oh, God, we sound an alarm in the holy mountain. Oh, God, we sound an alarm in the holy mountain. Oh, God, we sound an alarm in the holy Let there be a solemn assembly. We sound an alarm in the holy mountain. We sound an alarm in the holy You said, God, we must pray without season. We sound an alarm in the holy You said, God, we must press towards the mark of the higher calling. We sound an alarm Shandaya, we forget the things which are behind and we press and we press for there's an higher mark in the name of Jesus. We press, 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 we press. Rabashi kotori basaya, rekundo robo sata kanda ya basata ya, rekundo riba shanda ya, rekundo robo sata ya. Oh God, we press. Oh God, rekundo robo shata. The effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Rekoto riba sata ya. The effectual prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Oh God, we will pray and faint not. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint because God, you have gone before us and your joy will be our strength hallelujah hallelujah we shall run like mighty men hallelujah we will never break ranks lord of zion lord of zion lord of zion lord of zion we are taking back our seashores we are taking back oh god our hair strips we we are taking back our borders. We are taking back our wharves. We are taking back our Turibo Sakataya. We are taking back the runways. We are taking back Rekundorobo Sataya. Oh God, we are taking back. We are taking back Katuribo Sataya. Rekundorobo Satai. We are taking back, we are taking back, oh God, our mothers, we are taking back our fathers, we are taking back our men, we are taking back our children, oh God, we are taking back our daughters, we are taking them back from the hands of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we are blowing our trumpet and we are sounding our alarm, we are taking back, oh God, the enemy will not sell out our children, the enemy will not sell out our men. 
in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we rejoice in you, God. We rejoice in you because you are God and we are taking back. It is our heritage. It is our heritage. Rakotori basata. And you are our haba. Haba, haba, haba. Rekotori ba. Rikuribo sataya. We are taking back. We are taking back. Hallelujah. Oh God. Yokondor yobo sataya. Oh God, your word is clear. And it shall come to pass. After that, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your whole men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaid. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens. And the earth, blood, and fire, and smoke. Turibo shakata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be deliverance in Zion. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we render to you. Oh God, Rebu Shako Turibo Sataya. Oh God, pour out of your spirit. Pour out of your spirit uh, in Spanish town. Uh, pour out of your spirit. Rekundo Ribu Shataya. Pour out of your spirit uh, in Greendale. Uh, pour out of your spirit. Akata uh, Rekoto in New Nursery. Pour out of your spirit. Uh, oh God in Shelter Rock. Uh, oh God, pour out of your spirit uh, in De La Vega. In Thai Spain. Rakoto Riba Sakata. Rekoto Ribo Shandaya. Pour out of your spirit. Uh, Pour out of your spirit in Twickenham Park. Pour out of your spirit in Garden Pen, in Irish Pen. Rakotoriba Sataya. Pour out of your spirit. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. In Nana Road, Spanish Town. Pour out of your spirit. We are taking territories. Rakotoriba Sataya. We are taking territories. Oh God, we are taking territories. Oh Koturiyama Shikotoriba Yama. Sikundeba, Ribu Shikura Bakata, Riubu Shikunde Rebuta, Rekuna Masakatai, poor out of your spirit, God. Poor out of your spirit, God. Rekundo riba, ribu shikondi raba kata. Rekunda bosa tata, rekundo bosa tai. We are taking dominion. Rekundo rakata ya masaka tai. Riku riba ta kurebe sakata ya. We are taking authority. Rekunde basa kata. Rekundo riba kanda ribu sakata. Rekundo riba ya masaka ta. Rekunda we break. Oh God, a spirit of to buy a rekundo riba. Shakata, Riko to Riba Sakata. We are building walls. Oh God, we are building strong foundation. Let our roots stand sure. Let our foundation stand sure. In the name of Jesus. Rekundo Riba Kata. Ribu Shikoto. Let your glory cover the earth. Rekundo Ribu Shakata. Ribu Shikoto. Let justice run down our streets. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh Ribo Shikondo Ribo Sakata. Let there be a divine manifestation. Let there be a divine transformation. Lord, I said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Oh, God, Jamaica need a trumpet blowing. Ribushikunda, Rekotoriba Satay. We are a reservoir spirit. Rekotoriba Kataya. That is not of God. Every foreign God, you will not take place in this nation. Rekoto, we command you to back up. We serve your notice. Rekotoriba Yama Sikuto. Rekotoriba Kataya. Every diabolical spirit, we break your stronghold from over our nation. In the name of Jesus, from the parliament to King. House, Rekoto Ribakata, to every house, to the house of parliament, to every institution, to the 
financial house. Oh God, to the Bank of Jamaica, loose the finances of the people. Rico Toriba, we break the spirit of poverty and lack. Oh God, release a divine blessing in the name of Jesus. We declare that grace and favor. Rico Toribo Sata shall speak in our nation. We declare Hannah shall speak in our nation. We declare love to speak in our nation. We declare loyalty to speak in our nation. Rakoto, Rakato, Ribo, Sata. Lord, your word declare that you will rescue your people. Rescue your people. Yakoto riba sataya, rekoto riba ndabati uru musha, rimu saka turibo sayama, rikunde bikunde yama sakata, rekundo riba kata yaba sataya, rikundo robo shekoto, ribo shikoto riba sakataya, rekoto, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall rekoto riba ka, ribu shikoto, they shall mount up with wings as he goes, rekoto. Kundoribo shana musi kundoriba rikunde katuriba rikotoria masakata rikondoriba rikuribo sikunda rikotoriba kanda ribo sikoto rikoraba sakata let there be an atmospherical shift in this nation rekoto we command everything that is not of God to come in alignment rakoturiba kata rikoto we declare that everything that is out of order to Coming harder, Rekundo Ribo Shakata, Rekundo Ribo Kura, Rekundo Riba Kata, Ribo Shiku, Rekundo Ribo Sata, Lord, pour out of your spirit, pour out of your spirit upon all flesh. Let there be a manifestation of your glory, Rekoto Riba Sata, Lord God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, Akondo Rima, Ribo. Bushi kuri bakata, rikunduri basakata, rikotori bakaya musakata, rikunduri boshataka, rikotori basakata, rikotori bakata, rikunduri bakato riba, ribushi ku, rikata raba sakata, rikunduri bakata, rikotori boshakata. Let your fear return to this nation. Rikotori ba, rikotori bakata, rikunduri baya masakata, rikoto. Bring the captive Rio Kunda Raba Sakata Rekoto Riba Robu Shikondo Riba Yama Yikundu Ribo Sakata Lord pour out of your spirit today Pour out of your spirit today God Oh God return to your people the hears that the palm of worm and the kyanka worm has eaten. Ro ribu shikunda raba sakata ya. Ro riba shakata. We declare a generational blessing, generational wealth. Riko to riba kata. Like Deuteronomy speaks about, we shall be blessed in the city. We shall be blessed. Kondo riba kanda ribu shikoto. Rikata rabo shata. We shall be the head and not the tail. We shall be above only and not beneath. We shall be the righteousness of God. We shall walk in holiness and righteousness. Oh God, we thank you. We worship you. Lord, we put our pastors before you. Lord, we declare that you will continue to cover them. Lord, we declare that you will continue to cover them. Oh God, like that mother in hovers over a chicken. We declare God, Ekoto, with that gentle gloves, you will continue to hold them up. Oh God, we declare that your might and your strength strength and your authority will continue to be upon them and they will grow from strength to strength. Oh God, let your glory shine brightly upon them. In the name of Jesus, we come against every plan of the enemy. Oh God, I want to intercept them, but God, we intercept every powers. In the name of Jesus, and we cast it down. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, continue to pour in them. In the name of Jesus, the full measure, the press down, the sh- 
shaken together, they're running over. Rakotori Boshata of your anointing. Oh God, let there be a Rabashe Kotori Bakataya. A breaker in the spirit. Rakata, a devil trampler. Rakondori Bakandari Bushi Kundaya. Rakotori Bosatai. Lord, when the enemy sees them, they will say, We cannot touch them because they are covered. The blood of Jesus is applied upon them because your word declare when I see the blood, I will pass over. Let there be a resurrection power in the name of Jesus that wherever their feet shall touch that you are given unto them. Oh God, what they lay their hands on, there shall be deliverance. There shall be breakthrough in the name of Jesus. When they speak, their mouth shall be like a sword and a hammer. We declare that comprehensive coverage. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let that hail run down upon them. Like poor that come from here and said, Rakato, right down. Rakunduri bakataya, Bosakata, yo Bosakataya. Holy Ghost, anoint them with Holy Ghost and fire. Rebo shakata yama sataya. We come against everything that come against them. We speak against everyone that speak against them. Rakoto riba kanda rabo sata kandu riba ba shi umusa. Rimusi keti umusa kata ribo sakata ya. Oh God, we command the atmosphere around about them to be pure. Rakundu ribo sakata. Ribo shi kundu riba kanda yama sakata. We come against interruption and diabolical plan. In in the name of Jesus. Lord, we exalt you now. We close the mouth of the lion. Cover your people also, God. In the name of Jesus, we come against backlash. We come against sickness and untimely death. Oh, God, we will not break ranks. Oh, God, but we will stand in our authority. We will stand in our... In our dominion. We will declutter. We will pursue you. We will practice your word. We will preach your word. We will grow. Lord, let grace and favor continue to be upon us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we give the Lord a worship. We give the Lord a praise. We give the Lord a worship. Hallelujah. Hey, Yamusha Satire. Oh God, we give you glory. We give you honor. Oh God, like in the day of Pentecost, we call forth a Holy Ghost fire upon your people. Lord God Almighty. Oh Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Oh God, ancient of days. Oh God, Akataribushata. Rekotoribosata. Yekundo Yobosataya. You are our burden bearer this morning. You are the glory and the lift of our heads. Many are they that trouble us, but you, O oh God, are a shield for us. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads this morning. Lord, let your glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, O oh God, Almighty, oh O Riba Nama, Sikete Kuna Masaya Mashikoto. Lord, you will fight against them that fight against us. You will bless them that bless us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Rekunda man amasi kotoya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be exalted, O oh God in the heaven. Be exalted. You are majesty. Oh, you are the ancient of days. You are holy, and there is none like unto you. Lord, we thank you for today. Oh, we welcome, oh God, our speaker for today, Minister Swaby. We welcome her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, be exalted. Be exalted. Hallelujah. 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 Ye kondoriba kataraba satai. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give the Lord Hallelujah. praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Truly, he is worthy. He is worthy. Just take another moment and just lift him up in the house. Hey, hallelujah. 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 We lift you up, lion of Judah. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. You are the lion and the lamb. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are a gentle Jesus. You are meek and you are mild. But you are also that great and terrible God. And so we honor you today and lift you up for who you are, God. Hallelujah. Truly the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Jesus. We respond to your presence in the house. We bless you, God. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to just honor the presence of the Holy Ghost one more time in the house. Our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judea. Hallelujah. The prior answering God, we thank you. We lift you up and honor your name. In the name of Jesus, we want to honor, of course, our spiritual parents, Pastor David Lewis and Reverend Georgia Lewis, the members of the executive leadership team, all the workers and the members of Kingdom Grace. Our partners tuning in online. Amen. Amen. And our guests, we welcome you. Thank you for making it Kingdom Grace International Ministries. You may be seated in the house. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be continuing on the theme, build. We're building. And so we would have heard a very potent message on Sunday that spoke about what are we building? We're building a wall, not a fence, my God. What a powerful message that was. Building a wall and not a fence, and that's wisdom. According to Proverbs 3, Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4, it says, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. So it's beautiful and necessary for us to understand what we're building, why we're building it. So today we're going to look at how we're building it. We're building with purpose. And so the topic that I want to use today is building with purpose. Amen. And as we look at the theme or the topic, building with purpose, you want to look at two narratives in the Bible, and they're both found in the New Testament where we found that there were two men who were called to build. Nehemiah was called to build, rebuild the Jerusalem, the Jerusalem walls. And we also see the prophet Haggai, where he was called to rebuild the temple. So I, I really wanted to look at these two because the call to build in these two instances are contrasting the circumstances surrounding why they built and the timing, everything around it 
was different? How did the call to action to build come? If you look in both instances, it's different. In the case of Nehemiah, a burden was laid upon his heart. And for focusing more on Nehemiah, we're looking at the burden that Nehemiah had. We see that his story begins not with a direct call from God. He didn't hear a word from above, no voice from above saying, or any word through any prophet coming to say to build, but he had a burden. For him, it was personal, it was deep, it was emotional, and it tugged on his heart because he was from Jerusalem. So even though he was not living there anymore, he was a cup bearer to the king in a foreign land. You know, he still had that burden, even though he could have easily dismissed the news that he got. When he heard about what happened, he could have decided that, look here, where I am now, I've, I've grown past that. How many people like to say that? I've grown past, I'm not there anymore, I'm not looking back. And yeah, it does not affect me anymore. That's not my life anymore. It used to be, but it's not. It's not my place. I, things I used to do, I don't do them no more. Places I used to go, I don't go there no more. So he's now working as a cup bearer to the king in a foreign land. And so he didn't have to look at it. But there was a burden that propelled him into action and... This is evidence. I have to make sure that I give you the word to substantiate that. Amen. Because we are a house of the word. Amen. And so we're going to be looking at Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. And it said, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year... While I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said unto me, those who survived the exile are back in the province and are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burnt with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. Not one day, but the scripture said, For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. My God. Now, when I was you know, looking over and preparing, you know, this just showed an example of that scripture in Chronicles that said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That's the scripture that came to me when I read Nehemiah because it's a, it's a perfect example of somebody actually turning, actually, you know, seeking God's face. And so we realize that his response, he wept. He mourned. He didn't just do it one time. And sometimes, some of us burden is short-lived. Some of us burden will last beyond a day or a couple hours. You hear something happen, then you're like, oh, Lord, that's so sad. But Jesus even now, and then you move on. But in this scripture, we realize that it was a heavy burden. It was a deep burden burden and that burden caused him to seek the Lord for days so we realized that he fasted he prayed before God and you know his prayer encompassed a blend the true example of how a, an effective and fervent prayer is Amen, as the word said, effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. 
So his prayer, he confessed and he made supplication. You know, it reflects that there's an understanding that, you know, what is ahead, the call, the burden, and what he was led to do was heavy. It was not just something that is going to be a physical building of a structure, but it was something that was more profoundly spiritual. So his, his journey underscores that a burden placed upon your heart by God can also lead you into a compelling purpose. And it, drive, it drove him to undertake the work in alignment with the will of God. And what is profound in this story is that stepping in and ensuring that he is about the father's business, it meant stepping out into unknown territory or facing some challenges that would have come. And he must have known that those challenges would have come because he made sure that the first thing that he did, having heard what was happening in Jerusalem, was seek the Lord's face. He didn't even go to the king immediately to ask anything of the king. But his first approach was to the king of all kings. What can we take from that? What is our approach? Even when the burden comes, even when the vision comes, even when the ideas come, what is our first step? It should always be to approach the king of kings. So what, what is contrasting is that when you look at Haggai, it was a warning that came to rebuild. And so that was a direct warning from God. The people of Judah, having returned from exile, they prioritized their own needs, their own homes, and they neglected the temple of God, leaving it in ruins. And so through the prophet Haggai, the Lord issued a stern warning. It wasn't a little warning. It was a very stern warning. To say, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. <clears throat> you eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you will never have your fill. You're, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them in a bag with holes. So what this shows is that when your priorities are not aligned with the kingdom priority and the things that helps to build the kingdom, then it means that we will have these experiences where the wages, you're earning, yes, but where is it going? You're eating, yes, but where is it going? You're drinking, but where is it going? So... This gives us an example that we have to realign our priorities with God's priorities. We have to ensure that our actions are God-centered and not self-centered. Amen? Amen. And this example shows that, you know, our welfare or the things that we need, you know, certain level of things that we would get certain benefits that we would get it is linked to our obedience and service to the kingdom of God it is also a reminder that if if we neglect God's word then we can end up in a place of unfruitfulness amen amen because obedience helps us to bear fruit, as the Bible says, my sister, obedience is better than sacrifice. And so I want to just look a little bit deeper in building with purpose. Now, both scriptures, you would see that both Nehemiah and Haggai, they serve as powerful reminders that building with purpose is not merely a human endow endeavor. It's not. It's a response to a divine call. And for each of us, what that call looks like, what the action that is required from that call, the call to action 
is different for each of us dependent on our purpose and where we fit in the kingdom of God. Amen. Each of us have our own responsibilities as it relates to building, but we have to respond in obedience and we have to also go in faith because the Bible says faith without works is dead. So they have to go hand in hand. So in both cases, we see that the call to build was accompanied by a promise of God's presence and provision, assuring that when we engage in his work, he's with us, he guides us, and he empowers us to accomplish his purpose. Amen, amen, amen. So as I go through this, I'm inviting each of us here in the house, or if you're tuning in online, to just reflect on your own lives as I go through and to see, you know, how the Lord may be calling you to help building his temple and building with purpose. So we realize looking more in the scripture of Nehemiah, just to give a background, Jerusalem, it was once a city of splendor, right? And it was the heart of the Jewish faith and culture. And as the word came from the men that spoke to Nehemiah, it was now in ruins. Its walls, which was a symbol of strength and protection, were now broken down. And so it means then that there was opportunity for the enemy to come in without any barrier Amen? Amen, amen. And so we realized that Nehemiah was a man of God. He was serving in the court of Persian king. He was far away from his homeland. But even though he was living comfortably as a cupbearer, that burden came. And his reaction is what I want to look at next. How did Nehemiah react to this burden that he felt. You realize that he went into action immediately. The Bible does not recount any days passing or, you know, he moved on to anything else having heard that Jerusalem was in ruins, but it showed that he immediately went into prayer. That was his immediate reaction. So he doesn't just nod and acknowledge and say, boy, rough. I'm sorry for you hear that man. Oh, God, what a, what a story. What a thingy. Then nobody cut down, they couldn't build up at the wall. Do you mean to tell me that there is no one in Jerusalem that could build the wall? That could have been Nehemiah's reaction. Because, of course, he's not there. He's living comfortably and there are other people that are there. Does that look like something that we do sometimes? How many times we hear of things or, you know, we see that the Lord is doing our work. And we can identify that there is a call. But instead of us acting, we look to somebody beside us. Or even in our personal lives, sometimes there are things happening that just requires the reaction that Nehemiah gives immediately to pray. But instead of doing that, what do we do? Take up the phone and call, Pastor, I have this situation, you see? And um, the boss is fighting me at work and I'm asking you to pray for me. Or pastor, you know, violence is now prevalent in my community. They like, killed somebody last night and I saw this happening and I hear the young man doing this. And the young men are just sitting on the corner smoking weed and those kind of things. But have you taken any action understanding your purpose as a child of God and your role in the kingdom? What is your reaction? Amen. So he could have just acknowledged it. He could have just 
point the finger and say somebody else need look here, I'm not my business anymore. Somebody else could have done it. But we see that he went into action immediately and he went to the king of kings and he poured out his heart to God. And in pouring out, even though he was not there anymore, my God, what he did was he confessed his sins and the sins of his people. He confessed the sins of his family. He confessed his own sins and he acknowledged that they failed in keeping God's commandments. And what's next that he did? He reminds God of his promises to Moses. That if his people were unfaithful, they would be scattered. But if they returned to him and kept his commandments, even if they were exiled to the ends of heavens, God would gather them and bring them to the place he had chosen. My God. So Nehemiah's Prior did not leave anything out. He didn't leave any room for the enemy to come in and, my God, to, to accuse him. He acknowledged that, hey, we have sinned and fallen short. He acknowledged that, God, even though I am not there, I am repenting on behalf of myself. I am repenting on behalf of my family. I am repenting on behalf of the people. Of Jerusalem. Amen. So he pleads for God's mercy. And what's next that he did is that he asked the Lord for success and for strategy and to help him with the approach of how he was going to go about building the king, building the wall. Because of course, him being the cupbearer. He would have to get permission from the king. But before going to the king, of course, he might approach the king of kings to say, God, sort it out. Touch the king heart. Make sure, say, you know, all is in place. And so before he approached the king with his bold request, he made sure to pray about it. He made sure to pray about it. So we're going to look more into Nehemiah's leadership. So that is an example of excellent leadership where he first went into action. He had a vision. He went, he remembered the promises of God. He pleaded with God to ensure his success. And, you know, he, he highlighted, yes, you know, the vision was rooted in understanding who God was and what the promises of God were so it's important this is evidence that it's important for us to understand who it is that we're serving who God is what is the character of God his characteristics what are the benefits what are the promises that he has made because you realize that he used these in his prayer and so when you if you when you read through Nehemiah 1 from verses 5 to 11, you realize that it's a, I would call it a model of intercession. And it reveals his character as a man. And it reveals his, his understanding of God and the approach that he took to the task ahead. So let's look at what the prayer en entailed. It entailed the confession of sins. It entailed the remember remembrance of God's promises. It entailed a plea for success, understanding God's character and promises. For those who are taking notes, this, these were the key areas of his intercession. So first, he confessed sins. He remembered and reminded God of his promises. He asked the Lord for success in you know his what he would have done next which would have been to petition the king and he asked the lord you know to help him to have mercy in the sight of the king so that you know the king would have allowed him to work on the kingdom of god's the business of the kingdom of god he looked at understanding god's character and his promises amen, amen? Amen. So the next thing I want to look at as we, as you have taken down those practical steps and tips for interceding 
for the task ahead. We're talking still about building with purpose. And so we all have diverse roles in the building or rebuilding process. So whether it's a structure that has not yet been built or it's a structure that was in ruins and we need to rebuild, we all have a diverse role to play. So in, the, in chapter 3 of Nehemiah, it goes in detail, no, noting that there were a variety of people who were involved in rebuilding the wall. And each group took responsibility for a different part of the wall. It emphasized that collaborative effort is very significant. Amen. Even now, in this day and age, it is more important for us to collaborate in getting things done because we are all called with different things to do. Amen. Different tasks. Amen. And so you look at the variety of the persons that, par that participated and you look at Nehemiah chapter 3, which breaks this down. So you realize that there were priests and lay people that were there. So the work began with the priest and it was led by Elisha Bib, the high priest who set the work on the sheep gate. He sanctified it and set its doors. So the starting of the priest, of course, it symbolizes the spiritual significance of the work that was going to be done, right? But the rebuilding process was not limited to just the spiritual leaders, but it needed lay people, people who didn't have any title. So for all of us that believe that, hey, you have to wait until you get a title first before you can help in building the kingdom. Oh, I'm just here learning. Oh, I'm just here to soak up the word. Oh, I'm just here leaving it to the ministers and the pastors. Building requires not just the spiritual leaders, but lay people regardless of your background. So different persons, different backgrounds, they participated. Amen. So we saw also that different families and cities, they also participated in the rebuilding process. They rebuilt specific sections of the wall. For instance, there were the men of Jericho that built next to the priest, and that's in Nehemiah 3, 2. And the sons of Hassanah built the fish gate, that's Nehemiah 3.3. 3. People from the city of Tekoa repaired two sections. And though their neighbors did not actually, their nobles did not actually go to work, it shows a collective effort. They did not put, you know, everything in the work, but it shows that there was a collective effort that transcended beyond family city boundaries, but there was a united effort from getting the vision. So Nehemiah being the leader that he is was very clear in making the vision plain. And so he got the buy-in from these diverse people who helped. Now we realize that the persons that built were also professionals and they were also amateurs. They were skilled workers, like you had the goldsmiths and so on. But those, and you also had those that were not professional builders. But they all played a role. Amen? Amen. So there was shared responsibility. Each of them had a responsibility for a specific area. And there was a significance in every contribution. Now, you realize that there was a de the detailed account of those who repaired it. Emphasized that regardless of the contribution... It was not too small or insignificant. So this shows us today that regardless of your role in church, whether it is that your role and the action that you play, the role that you play in church is to just make sure that the chairs are dusted, the floors are swept. Whether you serve on the media team, you sanitize the microphones, or you hold a mic and teach or preach the word, it is significant. It, there's nothing that is too small. Amen? Because all of us 
play a role. It's a collaborative effort in rebuilding the walls. This was very ev evident in Nehemiah. It was a collaborative effort that took the wall, that got the wall done within 52 days. Amen. Amen. That was evidence that the supernatural power of God was on that move. Amen. In less than two months, it was repaired. So, looking at building with purpose and understanding that we all have a different role to play. If you look at 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 to 27, you see where Paul talks about the body of Christ and the importance of each member's unique function. Right? Every one of us have a unique function, and this was clearly outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. And he said, Paul emphasized that just a body, just as a body, though one, it has many parts, so it is with Christ's body, the church. Each believer is endowed with unique gifts and a specific role to play, contributing to the overall health and function of the body. Amen. The ears can do what the eyes do. And the eyes can do what the ears do. But they all play a significant role. And so it's important that we commit to the work of God. Whether it is that we are the hand or the feet or the eyes or the nose. You know, whatever part we play in the body. It's important. So in understanding our unique function within the body of Christ, Paul makes it clear that diversity within the church is a divine design. It did not happen by accident. Amen? Each of us have been given spiritual gifts through the Holy Spirit. And these gifts were given to us not for personal glorification. Not for us to take the glory, but for us to carry the glory. For us to serve others and build up the church. Now, what are these gifts? What are these different areas of functioning in the body of Christ? You have the gift of teaching, the healing, prophesying, administration. So what you realize is that there are different gifts. And each of us, having received one or more of these gifts, have to operate in those gifts. And so we are out of alignment the moment the intercessor feels that they should just preach. Amen? You're called to pray, but you want to preach. Out of alignment. Amen? You can imagine if the eyes decide that it wants to hear and not see you'd be blind because the ears cannot see amen amen so it's important for us to understand our gifts our calling our purpose what our personal giftings are and operate in it so how do you identify it you pray to god for insight we had the example here in Nehemiah where the first thing that Nehemiah did, having identified that there's a work that needs to be done, the first thing he did was pray. Amen. Seek the Lord. Amen. So the next thing is he was, he acted. And so we're going to be taking action based on what the Lord has led us to do. Each of us know, and if we sit here and pretend as if there's no tugging on the heart, there's no inclination to work in the kingdom, then we'll be lying to ourselves. Because the moment you accept the Lord as your personal savior, the moment you have Christ living in you, then he is, there is a work for you to do in the body of Christ. And so if at any point you can say and be honest that you're not getting a call to do anything towards the kingdom building process. 
then what it means is that your ears are shut off from God. That's exactly what it means because God is always speaking. And his word said, my sheep knows my voice. Amen? Amen. So if you can't identify that there is something that you are being called to do, it means that your ears are not in tune to God. So we realize going through Nehemiah that there was a profound question that was asked. So when, the, when Nehemiah went to the king, the king asked a profound question. And it was very straightforward. He never go around no bushes. He didn't beat around the bushes for those who are overseas. His very straightforward question was, what do you want? It was within the king's right or power to grant Nehemiah's wishes, but Nehemiah had to make the request known. Amen. 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 So, what do you want? Write the vision, make it plain. He had to make it plain. So, we realize that when the king asked him, he, because he already sought the Lord and he, in seeking the Lord, sought the strategies as well, he knew exactly what was needed. Right? He knew exactly what was needed. And so, he started to make some specific requests. He didn't say, oh, king... I beg you some more time. I didn't, you know, King, I didn't expect that question. I was not thinking along that lines. I didn't expect you to ask me that question. And so I beg you, I'm asking for a little more time to get back to you on that. He was prepared because his preparation happened in the secret place. Amen. He made sure to prepare in private. And so he was able to make some specific requests. The king even asked him how long his journey would take, when he would get back, all of those things. The king had some questions for him and he had the, the answers. He was able to answer and say, if it, in, in chapter 2, verse 7, he said, if it pleases the king, may I have the letters to the governors of trans-Euphrates, so that they will provide me with safe conduct until I arrive in Judea. He thought about everything, every detail. Every detail he thought about. He knew what he needed. He knew the material that was needed. He knew even not just the physical material, but he knew that there were some regulatory things. There were some things that would have been in the framework, regu regulatory framework in the area that he needed to be addressed and so he made sure to be clear in asking for what he needed so we're going to be looking at although so having answered the king being able to be very clear on what it is that he wanted he still having gotten favor from the king and gotten the go ahead and even though it was God inspired to build that wall, he had opposition. So from this we can understand that even though we are called, there we must be prepared for opposition. I've heard many times persons will say, even to themselves or to others, oh, maybe you weren't sent. You just went. <laughs> maybe you weren't called to do this, this work after all because, of course, why are you getting these grand opposition if it is of God or if you were sent? Why are you going through this? But when we're going through Nehemiah, we realize that he faced opposition. In chapter 4 to 6, we realized that he had challenges and opposition, but how did he face it? With prayer. 
So he didn't just pray before going, but he continued. He is an example of praying without ceasing. In prayer at the start, he prayed at the beginning and he prayed at the end. So when he faced opposition, what he did was he addressed the challenges that came through prior. And he didn't just pray and leave it. He was vigilant as well. And he was committed. He continued the work. Amen. He didn't just bow out and say, okay, God, you know, these things are happening. I can't deal with it anymore. But I'm praying, God, I'm leaving it to you. You will find someone else to get it done. He was committed to the task. And so it's important for us to realize that we have to be prepared. And the preparation doesn't happen in the public. If we wait until we go in the presence of the lawmakers, we will be in problems. The preparation has to happen in private first. So we can build up the spiritual defense. Amen. The armor can be up. Amen. Amen. And so we realize that he had his, cha his challenges. He encountered the oppositions. And these oppositions were not some puny puny oppositions. It was oppositions that came and threatened to derail the project. Because, of course, they didn't want the walls to be rebuilt. And so if, if it was up to them, and if Nehemiah was not vigilant and committed, then the wall would not have been up. And for him to have not only remained committed and got it done, but he got it done in record time, in 52 days. Sorry. It spoke to the level of preparation that he had. And it spoke to the level of favor that he would have gotten through God. So we saw where Sanballat came. We saw that Tobiah came. And there were some other non-Jewish inhabitants of the surrounding regions. Yes, that feel like, okay, this don't need to happen. And what did they do? They started mocking the Jews. My God, I'm questioning whether can you really build this? They question their ability to rebuild the walls and to restore the city. And so as the work continued, of course, they continued to work. The mockery continued. And when they realized that just mocking them is not going to be enough to stop them, they got angry and then they started to conspire and plot against them and fight against Jerusalem and to trouble, stir up trouble against it. You'll see this in chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. But what was Nehemiah's response again? The response, what is the posture? We realize that the posture of his heart is always, Lord, your will. Lord, help me. Lord, what is the strategy? And so what he did was, he combined prayer with practical action. So he didn't just take action and go into intercession, but he took the necessary action to rebuild the physical walls. So he prayed to God. He asked for strength. He didn't stop there. He asked for protection. And then he organized the people. Amen? Amen. Amen. So... What he did was he stationed them by families. He armed them with swords, spears, bows, and he put them around the lowest parts of the wall. And he didn't stop there. He also put them at the exposed areas. Talk about building up defense. He was building an army. So what he did, he used a dual strategy where he relied on God while he also took the necessary measures, right? So he understood that faith is complemented by wisdom 
and practical action. Amen? Amen, amen. So, coming down now, we're looking at overcoming internal discouragement. So, it must have been discouraging. Can you imagine? Remember, some of the people who were actually helping to build the wall were novices. They're not builders. They just bought into the vision and decided that, hey, whichever way I can assist, I will assist. So you can imagine now somebody coming and saying, huh, you can't really build this. Can you really build this? Questioning. You are already working on knowing in yourself that I've never built a wall before. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm just relying on these strategies that the Lord has given and following this leader, Nehemiah. How many of us would start grumble? I don't know why I took on this. Why I take on another man's problems. Nehemiah, this is your burden. This is not my burden. Why am I following this man and doing this? And I'm not called for this. How did they overcome that apparent internal discouragement? Because the external discouragement happened. And no matter how hard we try, sometimes it comes internal. It comes. It comes. And so the threat of attack, it created fear among the people. And the task of rebuilding the wall, especially with the threats, and the discour so the discouragement is one, you know. But remember, they, 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 they graduated from those discouraging them and mocking them to starting to threaten them. So, and intimidating them, correct. So, you can just imagine the feeling of the people. How did they overcome that? So, they grew tired and the task seemed insurmountable. Because them look at the vast amount of rubble. So you can imagine an entire, the Jerusalem wall was in ruins. You can imagine the amount of rubble to work through, to clear up. Because remember, if you know anything about building, you have to clear the area first. You have to prepare the area first. Even if it's a farm, you have to prepare the ground. If it's building, you're going to be building. You have to prepare the ground. There are some preparational work that has to take place before building. So they had hearing now the external discouragement. Sanballat, Tobiah, all of them trying to discourage them and telling them, letting them second guess what they're doing. Then the fact that they're not pros at this. Then looking at the work in front of you. It's a daunting task. And so they got tired. But what was Nehemiah's strategy? He rallied the people. He reminded them how great God is. He encouraged them and showed them the benefit for their families. Fight for your families, your homes, and your heritage. He showed them that it's beyond them. That what they're doing now, as it was for Nehemiah, where he didn't have to get involved, but he got involved because... It's a call beyond him. It is something that is going to benefit not just him, but generations to come. He wanted to leave a heritage, a legacy. So he encouraged them and let them realize that, hey, you're leaving a legacy. So he reorganized the workforce. And so we see in this that even as a leader, you're called to do something. You have to understand that the team that you get to build with, there are times that the enemy will come and it is said that you're only as strong as your weakest link. So the first thing that the enemy will do is to try with the weakest link. So as a leader, you cannot be daunted by the persons around you being discouraged. You have to understand the vision and stick to the strategy. So that's what Nehemiah did. He realized that he needed to stick to it and whatever happened, the wall needed to be built. And so he was resolute in getting that done. And so we see that he rallied the people. He reminded them of God's greatness. And what he did, he reorganized the workforce for both the work and the defense. So he made sure that defense was up. And he made sure in terms of the physical work, 
the physical labor and getting the building of the wall done. He had those in place. So he ensured that those who carried materials did what they were supposed to do with one hand and held a weapon in the other. Strategy. Amen. So Nehemiah's leadership, it kept the people focused on their purpose and instilled them the courage to continue despite their fears. And we are blessed with a Nehemiah of today. Amen. Amen. We bless God for our spiritual parents, our spiritual father who is the senior pastor of Kingdom Grace. We bless God that he had a burden. And he did not ignore the burden. And he continues to keep us focused. And so even these structured Bible teachings and lessons, it's building that foundation. He is building a firm foundation. And he keeps us focus. He keeps us in line by ensuring that we are held accountable. Now, that is a blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, countering deception and internal conflict is something that Nehemiah had to do as well. So, he faced, as with any other leader that would have been building something that is going to cause a problem that is going to threaten the kingdom of darkness. Deception comes because that is who the devil is. That's what he does. He destroys. He steals. Amen. Amen. He deceives. And so there was internal conflict and deception. Sanballat and, Tom and Tobiah, they attempted to lure him and had a meeting with him. And that meeting that they were setting with him was a meeting to ambush him, to harm him. But because God gave him discernment, he was able to discern their motives. And their motive wasn't just to harm him, you know, but it, was, it would also cause him to be distracted. Even learning that, that even, being, even having discerned that that is what they're doing, that's what their motive is, it could have distracted him and, say, and you know, derailed him from the plan. But he kept focus. So we realized that there was also internal discord among the Jews themselves because there was some hardships and it led to exploitation among the nobles and the officials. And what is going to happen? Anywhere there is this level of ex exploitation or there are economic hardships, what is going to happen is that there is a threat to the unity of people. Amen? You always have separation happening when these things happen. So this was a threat as well. And you see it in chapter 5. But again, Nehemiah sprung into action. And how, what did he do? To counter the deception, he steadfastly refused to engage with Sanbala and Tobiah. He wouldn't give them a time of day because he was focused on his mission. And he realized that his mission was too important, so it doesn't matter. So even if he, if what he discerned was wrong, even if you know they really had good intentions. He was still focused. It didn't matter what they were coming with. He was not interested in that because he knew the mission and he knew the strategy and he knew the God that he served. Amen. And that was all that was necessary. So what he did is that he confronted the nobles and the officials and he demanded them, amen, to stop exploiting the Jews. And he called for the restoration, return their property, and cancel their debts. Amen. And they agreed to that. And what it did was it reinforced, it restored the unity and focus among the people. Amen. So in conclusion, now we are seeing where regardless of the call, whether it is your call to evangelize, whether it is your call to preach the undiluted word of God, whether it is that you're called to intercede, whatever role you play in building the kingdom, one thing that is in inevitable is opposition. 
Even Jesus himself faced opposition. Amen. Amen. And so we will face opposition. We will face trials. However, we must remain resolute and know one thing that another thing that we learned from Nehemiah, first things first. He had his priorities in order. And so first thing that he did was he prayed. And the second thing that he did, when opposition came, he prayed. And then when more opposition came, he prayed. And so what you see is faith and works coming together and resulting in the building of the wall in 52 days. So we realize that there is a role of worship. He started out honoring God. He said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keeps his commandments. He honored God first. And then he said, let your ear be attentive and your eyes be open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. And so he was steadfast and committed. And so he worshipped and he used the word because we see where he reminded God of his promises to Moses. So worship, prayer, and the word of God is very necessary in building. Amen? Amen. And so we see that there's a spiritual renewal that happened. <coughs> Sorry. So outside of the physical rebuilding of the wall, we realize that the people were... They're spiritually renewed. They were spiritually renewed after they built because Nehemiah had that specific strategy and approach. And the reaction of the people, they, after hearing the word, they were committed to obey. Amen? Amen. And just to use an example as well in wrapping up Matthew chapter 7, where it shows the importance of building our lives on the teachings of Jesus. Amen? So we have to look at the practical ways to integrate God's word into our daily life and decisions. What promises are there that the Lord made to you? That you, when oppositions come, when you see the task ahead, and it may seem that it's an impossible task, you can remind the Lord of what his promises are when you're seeking him. Amen? Amen. And so, in conclusion, we realize, just wrapping up, that he used prayer as a foundation. Not one step did Nehemiah take without seeking God's guidance. So it teaches us the importance of grounding our actions in prayer and ensuring that not that all efforts are just good, but they are God-ordained. Amen? Vision and action. Nehemiah's ability to see beyond the ruins of what was in Jerusalem to what Jerusalem could be is a powerful reminder that God often gives us visions to see beyond the current circumstances. However, the vision alone cannot get it done. Because vision without action, the, act, the, the task remains undone. So what Nehemiah did, he took, he took a methodical approach to planning and execution of rebuilding the wall. And it illustrates how vision and action goes hand in hand. So don't just envision what the Lord is doing in this season, but act. There's a songwriter and a song that I love that says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Amen. So the other 
lesson to take away from this is unity is required, diversity is required. So accept who you are and how you are, how God made you. Don't feel like you must always pray like Sister Butler. <laughs> My God, you are called to pray. We are all called to see the Lord. So don't just feel like, oh, because I can't speak in tongues for 15 minutes straight. God is not going to hear my prayer. He is going to hear you. Amen. As long as you're committed to the work, understand the diversity. Understand the vision of the house. And the vision of this house in this season is that we're building God's kingdom. And as we build, we have to take into consideration that we are different, we are unique. And without our unique touch, the building will not be the same. God relies on us to get the work of the kingdom done. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it required participation from everyone. It, it didn't matter their social standing whether they were a priest or just a lay person, or whether they had built a wall before or they didn't even know what a wall was, they were still important to the building process. So the next thing is to face opposition with faith. Nehemiah faced significant opposition, yet he did not falter. Instead, he activated his faith, he prayed, he took action. He, get, he put guards at the different areas. And he also encouraged and motivated the people. So this teaches us that op opposition is often a sign that we're doing God's work. Amen. And faith coupled with wise action is what will help us to overcome. And the final thing I want to just remind you of is the role of God's work, word in the work. God's word has a role in the work. Amen. So the project didn't end with just the physical walls, but with a spiritual revival. As the people turned to God, the, the people had turned to God. So that's where the revival was evident. So this underscores that any work that is done in God's name, it should lead to a deeper spiritual commitment and understanding. It should lead to bringing people to God. We are called to worship. The Bible says the time has, will come and now is where true worshipers must arise and worship him in spirit and in truth. So as a true worshiper, our role is to worship him in spirit and in truth, to continue to lift him up. Because as the word also says that if he be lifted up from this earth, he will draw all men unto him. So we have to, we have to work on getting things done. So according to the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that is where I want to leave you today. And so I'm going to ask you to stand. As we prepare to get our offering, I, I want to get a microphone to just ask. I'm going to take a quick takeaway from... Anyone that wants to share a takeaway today from the word? Just a quick takeaway. If you want to share a quick takeaway, raise your hands as we prepare to do the offering. Dr. Hood. Oh, Sister Castello, since you're closer to. Okay, awesome. Hello. Good afternoon. Bless you fellow KG mites and guests. Um, a major takeaway is to pray, pray, and pray. 
and um, building spiritual capacity is important in any rebuilding process. Even before you take on the physical work, um, the prayer that is invested those four months prior to even approaching the king. Amen. Right. Um, was what facilitated the success. Something that took several years, took 52 days. And um, so the investment in that quiet place at your altar is absolutely important for success. Amen. Thank you for that. And, and you know, as, as Dr. Hood was talking, I remembered how our spiritual father, Pastor Lewis, told us about how when he was called for this work, he spent, I don't remember how long he said, was it two years? 20, 21 months, yes. So he, instead of going on 21 days of fasting, he fasted for 21 months and seeking the Lord. And so we can see not just evidence in the Bible, but we see, we have the evidence here through our own modern day Nehemiah that seeking the Lord works and it gives the grace for speed and acceleration because a lot of persons, when they visit us and learn that we're just two years old, they're amazed at what the Lord has done so far. And that's testament to, you know, what God does when you seek him first. Is there anyone else that wants to share? Okay. Brother Hendrix that's and quick. then Sister Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, as the word of God said, in that we must not lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledging, and he will direct upon. I would say, we see Nehemiah display that. He didn't lean to his own understanding. Yes. But in all, every opposition, he acknowledged God in it, for God to direct him what to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. That's so powerful. Sister Lorraine. Afternoon again, everyone. Good afternoon. Brother Mark just said part of what I want to say, but I will just elaborate a little on it. Main point, we will be faced with opposition. We will be faced. But always remember to pray, pray, pray again. and pray more prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Lady Butler? You wanted to add something? All right. All right. Brother Hendrix, one thing more to add before we... A lot of people will see opposition as something negative. Negative, yes. But I've learned something a couple of weeks ago. Opposition is an indicator that God is in it. Amen. That is correct. Yes. There's always going to be a reaction of the enemy when yes. you're doing God's work. Yes. So it, when we see, it's an indicator. So we must not focus on the, 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 um, the opposition. Focus on why it comes. Why it's there. Right. It's there for a reason. I'm making and, and what the response is, the strategy to overcome. Strategy. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you just, for that. Just something short. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, just um, physically, spiritually, you know, at my shop, you know, if I had followed intimidation, I would have closed down mm -hmm. because prayer, I, I'm a person of prayer. I pray, pray, and pray. I, one, one at a time, one at a done came. He came more than once. Had a person had rented part of where I was, and he came and intimidated, and they said, them can't bother with this, so them gone. But I am still there. Visit me more than one time, and I am still standing because I let him know that if he kill me today, it does really matter. If he still go go on, and he not go live another day. So whatever he thinks, I'm going to still be there. Any time he passes, I'm going to still give him, giving him a dime because I know who I am. And I know. So in building, we have to press. Amen. Matter the circumstances, because there's a mark and there's a call. Nehemiah said there was a call. As Minister Swaby said, many persons said, why? Oh, did fit with this? Somebody else go that they do it, you know. Why me have to take up here and do it? But I think he had a call, he had a divine call for that purpose, for that work. Amen. As you say, you know, if you call for you build the wall, you build the wall. If you call for you pray, you pray. If you call for you sweep the church, you sweep the Amen. church. Don't don't shift rank. Don't come out of your rank. Else you will get lick. My 
God. Powerful, powerful. Dr. Hode wants to share one more quick point before we... <laughs> Yes. yes, so the other point is um, we have to be wise in handling the Sanballat and Tobias. And if you remember now, they were trying to ambush Nehemiah in supposedly having a meeting. Mm -hmm. And so in our own lives, and even as it relates to this body, we have to be wise in identifying the devices of the devil. And so we don't get caught in a trap. And so we have to ask the Lord wisdom, how to handle when traps are being laid for our own destruction. And so Sanba, um, Nehemiah didn't meet with them, right? Because he, through the spirit of the Lord, recognized that it was a trap. Yes. And so we have to ask the Lord, you know, which battles to deal with and which ones to leave for the Lord to handle. So sometimes there are situations that will want to pull you in, but it's really a trap. And sometimes you just hold your peace, right? And just let the Lord fight the battle for you, right? And in, in the fullness of time, you'll see that indeed it was not genuine, what was supposedly supposed to be a, a meeting to reconcile. And so may the Lord help us to have that level of wisdom in handling opposition. Powerful, that is so true. So true. Thank you for that. Um, so we're going to just, if you have an offering, we must work while it is day. Tread in the word of God as we walk along the way. We must witness to everyone we meet. In every word we say, we must tell them of our soon coming King. I'm going to ask Dr. Hood to please, if she can, pray the wrap up prayer and also bless the offering that has been collected. Thank you so much. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, that we have just feasted at your table again, oh God. And it's such a beauty to just delve into your word, Lord, and receive, Lord God, that which is laid up for us, Lord God. You have given us all that we need for life and godliness. Lord God, your word is indeed a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we thank you for illumination this afternoon. That, Lord God, we are better off now, even in facing the situations that may present themselves to us. And so we thank you even for the offering, Lord God. And we thank you that it is for the betterment of the body of Christ, for your kingdom, Lord, for souls. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are indeed in this place. And that, Lord God, indeed the walls are being built. And that we are happy to be a part of this process with our weapons in one hand and our tools in the other. And we know that we shall be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's lift our hands as we close. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, now one forever. Amen.